that was fine, although I was thrown in massively occasionally because of the tech stuff, but I think it was okay. Yeah, yeah that's the, the tech stuff is the thing that's pulling well, like, Because you just, you can't do a sound test, you no. can't do... Hi everyone, welcome to the Magic Podcast. This is uh, hour 60 of the 220 hours of doing a Crossing Friends. Just to remind you, it is a relaxing one, which means if you like to stay like this or hear loud sudden noises, you need to leave any time at any point in the hour, you're absolutely welcome to, there are chairs outside. And we also have a relaxed section for sound and movement in the room, which is for the benefit of those who struggle with being still and silent for the hour. And obviously if you need anything else, including the interpreter, please just let me know. My name is Chloe, uh, I'm the eternal speaker for Boaz over there, if you need anything, give me a wave. Uh, and I will pass you over to Alex, who is our GM for hour 60. Woo! Hello stream, yes, as Chloe just said, I am Alex, I am your GM for this final hour of today. Um, so, what is this? Well, Adventures Wanted is a tabletop role-playing game. What that means, for those of you who don't know, is that uh, the people sat on the table around me are playing characters. Unique, individual characters. I am playing everything else. What happens is they tell me how they want to interact with the world and the people and things within the world, and I will ask them to roll dice. Their success or failure in the rolling of that dice will tell us whether they succeed majestically or fail dismally. Um, it adds an element of randomness and it helps push the story forward. The story so far, the characters at our table are all members of the crew of a ship known as the Spirit of the Horizon. It is a military scientific vessel that has been sent off to discover uh, an artifact to help end a war. They found a strange, mysterious sunken temple, and within it, a tablet, fizzing with arcana and energy of a spell level and spell power that none of them had ever seen before in their lives. As well as that, they discovered an ancient, angry elder god who laid waste to the world around them, and in their desire to find safety and shelter and to get away from this monstrous being, the captain of the ship decided to cast this spell. She did so at the cost of her own life. And the ship and all its inhabitants found itself suddenly floating, lost. Strangers in a strange new world filled with strange species and monsters that they had never seen before. They have now been on this land known as Havma for about two weeks. In that time, they have fought many monsters. They have met numbers of these strange new species from all around this globe. And they have had some levels of success and they have made some enemies. Most recently, they accepted a task from a, a lady known as Queen Abilzim, who is the, one of the queens of an island known as the Troquen Caldera. She has sent them on a task, having seen that they are valiant fighters and um, successful pugilists, she has sent them off on a task of diplomacy and negotiation to a land known as Rawstool, where two warring species, the Komodo, a short lizard-like group of humanoids, and the Katafu, a much taller, thick-skinned, long, long flowing-haired, um, facially quite ugly species, um, have been fighting a long, drawn-out war of attrition over the land. They arrived on the land. Um, there was a small scuffle between the two sides, the, which the players stayed out of. And they went off with uh, a small band of the Katafu into their city. They met a man, uh, a young Katafu man known as Rom and his friend uh, Jam, Jan, Zan. Zan. Zan, Zan, sorry, so many names, yeah. um, uh, who suggested that they join, that the players join them on an adventure to a party. The party is in the other city on the <laughs> other side of the battlefield. They have infiltrated into the city of the Komodo, made their way to this vast, flower-covered, tree-surrounded um, villa 
and found themselves in the middle of a festival feast in honor of the racial deity of the Komodo, uh, a dragon god known as Mahakiro, Mahakirio. Um, when last we saw our players, they had split up a little bit and were in different parts of the party looking for different things and investigating various, um, various goings on. Um, we will pick back up there in a moment. Um, before we do so quickly, can I ask my players to just introduce themselves, the name of the character, what the character does, and why the other people at this ta table might know their character? I am Isla. I am playing Noggin, who is a gnome rogue, and I am the dentist on the ship, and everyone knows me because I've probably stolen something from them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Simon. I'm playing Nomi Watts, also a gnome, and I reckon people know me because they don't like me. And I've probably done something to hurt them in the past. Exactly what we need on this diplomacy mission. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the man for the job. Uh, I'm Ed, I'm playing Gwendolyn Skull, the master of the uh, ship Spirit of the Horizon. Um, I am supposed to keep discipline, but to be honest at the moment, I just want to drink because I can't tell what's going on <laughs> and haven't been able to since the beginning. And to be honest, just someone my damn size would really help at the moment. Ed, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Ed has been rolling the Appalling. worst dice I have ever seen it's just over awful. both days that he has been playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every single time. It's getting boring. Anyway. Um, so when we left our players, um, Gwendolyn and... Uh, Galbert Twinkletoes were off in the corner of the party. Um, they were talking to their erstwhile friend and uh, co-conspirator uh, Zam. Someone who hasn't tried to kill us yet. Um, who is one of the people who decided and encouraged you to come along on this this jape, this this visit to this party. Um, they're tucked away in the corner of the party, and um, Brina and Noggin were right up at the front oh, yeah. at, the, um, at this long sort of wooden trestle table on which there are various uh, bowls of fruit and offerings of flowers, uh, and they themselves have just uh, laid an offering of these beautiful flowers that Noggin had very cleverly <laughs> picked from the forest before she arrived. Um, um, <laughs> They, <laughs> while they are stood there, they have overheard a conversation between uh, this noble Komodo and his wife, um, who are stood on a, a parapet balcony that goes around the whole edge of the room. Um, and they have been having this sort of uh, deep conversation about how someone is missing. Um, sounds like it's someone important, someone from their family. Um, and she is a little bit like, it's okay, but her husband is very upset that she is missing. Um, at that moment in time, Gwendolyn and Noggin, you notice that your companions start to fizzle with that strange golden energy that you have come to know far too well over the last two weeks. And suddenly, they disappear from sight. Oh. Where Galbert once stood, you see Nomi Watts. Ah, back again. Right, my immediate. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nomi, in front of you are lizard people. Hold on. Um, my first reaction on seeing that he's appeared is to try and barrel him sort of away from everybody. <laughs> Resist! Oh, <laughs> Roll a contested helping. strength check. Yeah, Can I go. go over and help with um, barreling away? When t as you see Brina disappear, you are aware that that doesn't always, that bodes ill often. Yes. Um, and so, uh, yes you can. What I will do is just roll a bit of... Wow, no one even saw her disappear. <laughs> that is... Amazing. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> <sighs> um, 
Yeah, the people who are around, they're in, then they're involved. All of the other Komodo are engaged in in various acts of worship or conversation. And ooh, like dramatic fun. lighting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at some point, Suddenly when you've sorted out the lighting, I would like some party music, if that's possible, Chloe. <laughs> That'll do, thank you. Oh, wonderful. Um, yeah, so yeah. Noggin, you start to make your way over to where you last saw your two companions in the corner of the room. Um, right, what's going on between Nomi and, 15, and Gwendolyn? 21. Bitch. He grabs you and he puts his hand immediately over, over your, your mouth, mouth and yeah. he pushes you and barrels you into the corner of the room. Um, Rom sees you do this and turns and follows after you, and he's just like, I forgot what he sounds like. Um, what, what is it? What, what's going on? This is our friend. What's wrong with him? What? Nothing, nothing. He just tends to be a bit of a loose cannon. Can we, have we got another potion for him? Like yeah, no, all right, all right, all right. I love you too, but... I've got a backup, yes. Right, wonderful. Can we please give it to him straight away? What is it? It's a potion. <laughs> it's he a potion. So you can he look, pulls no, you this can small like vial out of his pocket of this sort of strange, slightly brown-looking liquid, and he hands it to Gwendolyn. Do these guys not look like... No, 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 I've got the skull on my face still. He's still got the skull but on his I face, look like a Komodo. but he looks okay. like a Komodo. Yeah. So I kind of get that. Yeah. Roll me a perception yeah. check, please. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. That's uh, 19, which is actually. <laughs> you roll a critical. Uh, it's only when it's a weapon. Oh, okay. That's, but, but nevertheless, 19 is very good. Yeah. Um, you spot around you that he's not the only person wearing some kind of fancy dress, there are other Komodos. <laughs> Dressed up, he is, however, the only one with a skull on his face. Yeah. So we're at a party. Let's get drunk. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All you need to do is take this first. Um, he's handed it across to you by now, so yeah, you yeah, have it in your hand. Taking... Okay. <laughs> it tastes muddy and not very nice. <laughs> Um, and you feel uh, a flush of arcane energy within your blood and a warm tingling sensation within your stomach and uh, you look down at your hands and you see that they are now scaly and they are this kind of tan, sandy, beige scales. We're not, we're not green lizards, we're, we're beigey, <laughs> beigey to orange. <laughs> and as you look around the party, you see that there is, uh, most of them fall within that beigey kind of orangey sandy colour but are here and there dotted around you see more that are slightly paler uh, some of which are slightly more orange slightly more red um, it appears that that is sort of that's part of the way that they can tell their families apart um, uh, so you find yourself now in Katafu, in K Komodo form uh, in the corner of the party whilst your master Gwen yes. Gwendolyn uh, stands in front of you, and to his side stands another Komodo that you do not recognise. Uh, what's, what's happening? Okay, it's very difficult to explain. We are on this peacekeeping mission. We are at a party where they are celebrating their god and also the fact that everybody has died. I celebrate this. Yeah, because they want to try and make... Sounds like my kind of people. Exactly. <laughs> they want to make sure that everybody is on the same page whereby they've got to keep Guys, we've got to try and stop them killing each other. I mean, we are not the people for the job. I understand. <laughs> That's why I'm saying, like, let's get drunk, and then it won't matter what happens. At this point, Noggin, you've made your way over to the small group who are clustered in the corner. I, I yeah. point to the Komodo that I don't recognise, and I go, Who's this fella? He is not actually a Komodo either. He is a Kafu. Katafu, Katafu. I've, I've said it three different ways yeah, today, yeah. so. <laughs> He's a Katafu who's disguised himself and got us in here. He is our in. We want to keep him. It's Zan, right? Zan. This is Zan. He's awesome. Zan leans in at this point and he goes, Yeah, I am. <laughs> um, and he, you hear him we'll in see. Um, <laughs> And he, you hear him say, So, we're here now. Why not have a little fun? Yes! So up for that. 
I reach for my whip. <laughs> no! No, 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 no. Later. Later. <laughs> Is it fun? I understand. Right. That's the thing. Different once definitions of fun. Exactly. Once we I get, get into it. it, once we get into it, it's going to be awesome. Okay, Martin. Uh, Noggin, you've made your way over to the party to... Uh... Well, I recognise Noggin. The sheep that you can... <laughs> Noggin is dressed <laughs> as a shark. As a shark. <laughs> very, very well. She looks like she's about three and a half foot tall. Looks like a sort of 11 or 12 year old lizard, <laughs> but dressed in like the cutest shark costume that you have ever seen. I look over and just go, Noggin. <laughs> <laughs> T-shirt. Exactly. Noggin, you uh, remember the conversation that you overheard between the two people? And I tell these lovely people about it. What do you tell them? <laughs> I heard like two boss people on the balcony bit. Yeah, and uh, who's, still, who's still pontificating now? Yeah, as you look over, like there is this large sort of solid looking quite short Komodo and he is a solid I'm being generous um, he is droning on basically he's intoning words of, of, of uh, divinity and wisdom and then you keep hearing the word Mahakirio and you get these sense roll me a religion check or a history check either It means nothing to you. Um, it's a word you've heard on the ship when you've been hanging around near Plumage, Plumage yeah. but you don't really pay attention to what he has to say, and so it means nothing to you. Um, but the people around him are nodding and agreeing. Next to him stands his wife, who is uh, taller, much more muscular. Um, uh, he's dressed quite um, ostentatiously in his religious finery with this great silver dragon's mask on his head. She stands next to him wearing almost like tapestry robes with this like thin silver pendant which has the same silver dragon logo on it. Um, and yeah, they're stood up the top and uh, he continues to, to drone on. So I interrupted you. What, what do you think of those uh, pendants? Pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need to worry about that, because it is a secret mission, and we can't stop it. <laughs> well, we find, we've found out about it. No, I understand. It's not secret anymore. But we can tell that to other Komodos, and they might be able to do something, but I don't think we should do anything. No, no we're neutral. That's Five what I'm saying. Here. But this, okay, okay, so. But we're not wanting, we're not wanting people killed. I know, I know that, but at the same time, lots of them have been. Uh, maybe it's the sort of uh, collateral damage. The small fish get away, so that we can get the, the big fish. Big fish. <laughs> you as a big fish should <laughs> understand this. Yeah, that seems to make sense to me now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So, given that we are at a party, we don't know what this guy Zan and what the what's the other one called? Rom. 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 Zan and Rom are doing, but they say they want to have some fun. And I saw. Did I see the, the him taking the Mickey out of the other one? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, they were taking them again at another one. I don't know whether they're trying to like cause fights or something like that, but it's going to be very fun finding out. I would suggest we stick to them again. I want to collect shiny things. Fair enough. You do, you <laughs> do that thing. I was going to say, as the roguey person, yes. could you kind of, if you could go around collecting shiny things, that would be great. If you see us in trouble, can you come over and help? No worries. That would be excellent. No worries. I'd say we should go and cause some trouble. Sounds good. Let's go. <laughs> um, you turn and you see that Zan has been stood there while you've had this whole conversation his ears are somewhat pricked up by the information that you imparted and you can see he takes note of it um, 
as worry and uh, a sense of fear crosses his face. He has... Uh, roll me an insight check. Yeah, everyone here. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Critical success on an insight thing. <laughs> Thank God for that. Uh, anyone else? Six. Mm. Suddenly, I'm laser Nine. beaming in on that. You can see that he's, con su he's super concerned. He, th the moment he hears what Noggin has to say mm. and this concept that uh, maybe there's some kind of raid or attack or um, something like that occurring, his, his straight up thought is of his people. Right. Um, he is still game for fun, but you can tell that he uh, his mind has somewhat wandered off um, and he's thinking about the, the people he has uh, back, home. back home. So he doesn't have a message. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> right. Um, so he says, well, there's more information here. I say, the party's only just begun. Perhaps we, we hang around here for a while. We, we have a few drinks. We mingle. We find out what we can about the Komodo and, well, their plans. Maybe we make fun of a few of them. Maybe you steal a few things. Yes, yes. And then we'll make some kind of dramatic end exit and leave. Ooh, can I use my tinker skill to create some sort of smoke bomb or like a stink bomb? Roll me a... Oh, yeah, tinkering. tinkering. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, yeah, roll me something. Well, I don't know what I'm... Um, what do you I'm reckon? I'm trying to remember what your tinkering allows you to do. Uh, well, you could uh, just make them, you don't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can make clockwork toys and you can make a little skunk. Send that out. Yeah. Stick the place up. It sounds like the two gnomes are going to work together <laughs> on something yeah. over here. Well, we're both. Um, both? I would say smoke, yeah. should be, smoke should be a component. Um, who has the best performance or sleight of hand? My sleight of hand is plus nine. Seven, my performance minus one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, le not a chari charismatic gnome. No. Um, you roll with s roll sleight of hand. Um, both, of both of you roll with advantage because you're helping each other. <sighs> I know that's not the rules stream, by the way. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Noggin, you, Five. you, Five. you, <laughs> with some success, with with help from from uh, from Nomi, managed to craft together. Um, I think the reason that you succeeded, Noggin, where uh, Nomi f didn't quite succeed, is um, that you've just collected more stuff, <laughs> and so you have more things available to you to. I admire her work. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they're tucked away in the corner making this tiny little uh, whatever it is. Uh, wh what is it? It's a little wind-up skunk. <laughs> Clockwork skunk. Yeah. That, that does what? It walks forward, spins its tail round, and then <laughs> releases a, a noxious gas. If, when we want it to, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that the idea? Off. Yeah. I mean, Remote how... control. How... Uh, <laughs> It's clockwork, presumably. You have to wind it up and how just yeah. drop it and walk how away from it. do you want this thing? We need people to be, like, blinded. So, not me. Uh, I take some stuff out. <laughs> 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 I grumble as I do. Uh, you have a... You have a congratulations, you have a tiny, wind-up, farting skunk. <laughs> Called Pepe. Yeah. Pepe. Um, wonderful. Uh, Zan heads off, and he... As he does, he says... Better go and find Rom. He's he's probably busy. And he says busy in that uh, way yeah, that yeah, means. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just gonna say. So who is she? Uh, he nods his head up towards the balcony. Oh no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And then gives you that kind of knowing look of like. Mm. Fair enough. 
Um, where do you want to go from here? What would you like to do? The bar! The bar. You don't really need to go to the bar because there are oh, the there are everywhere. platters wandering around oh, with, with yes, goblets. Yes, yes, you've, yes. You've, you've, they've, I mean, they've, they've walked past you at least one time. <laughs> 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 I didn't want to look at that dice, but it was kind of obvious. Yes, okay. So, in fact, um, I would say, okay, I'm going to, um, Lumi, let's have a drinking competition and see how many people we can get involved. <laughs> well, I'm just, okay, yeah, but... I say, well, you and I will use an old known trick. Yes. Where you don't actually drink. No, I'm gonna drink. Okay, but if there's fighting, you'll. Like, yeah, we're yeah. gonna be better than these guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but also, I'm thinking, no, I thought you meant the old known trick where we start hitting each other. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's the so trick. Can, well, yeah, I know, but at the same time, <laughs> more of the. Don't, fight. don't try. <laughs> Please don't try and hurt me too much, I'm but at the same time... I promise Peace. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I will hold back until you hurt me, okay? okay? I'll go to the other side of the party, and I'll pretend you've said something about my scaly wife. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. I'm just going to get drunk right now. I'm going to have, like, six drinks in a row. I have one drink. Fair enough. A, a platter filled with goblets, pass, silver goblets, passes past you. And uh, in the hands of someone, and as they turn to offer one of the komodos next to them a drink, <laughs> they turn back, and the platter is empty. <laughs> 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 and, yes, and I have taken, I have, I've had at least three of them, and I will be looking for it to have three more. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, uh, Zan wanders out of this main room, and he heads back into the. Uh, the sort of courtyard that's outside where you where as you came in, no me you wouldn't have seen this, but as, as you guys came in there was the the, the, the shallow pool with the with, with the water lilies in it. Um, uh, do you wish to follow him? Yes do. As you make your way outside, you see this this area is filled with small couples and they're carrying things. Um, in the in the ante room, the, the, the very the atrium, the very first room that you came into where you saw a, uh, a cube of water. Mm. Um, you see Rom with his back to you, and he's staring through the water. Right. You can't see what's on the other side of the water. I, still, uh, I, I, I can try and get another drink, and yeah. unless I still have one. Uh, you see, yeah, a couple of, uh, cool. of waiters are just stood around. I'm gonna get a drink, I'm gonna go over to him, I'm gonna do that really annoying bloke thing where you get bear hugged around the back, and I'm going to try and force the drink back. Draw me a perception check. Okay. Yeah. I'm wandering through the party, waiting. Oh, critical fail. <laughs> uh, you go, you go to grab him around the neck. Yeah. But you have forgotten that he is not a Komodo. He is actually a Kataku. <laughs> And he has drunk this potion, yes. which merely makes it look like mm -hmm. he is a Komodo. So as you go to put your hands around his shoulders, you instead feel... The bulge. Not shoulders. Right. And he turns shocked. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, he is very distracted, and he's like, What are you doing? Get away. I'm busy here. Can't you see? <laughs> and he gesticulates over his Komodo shoulder. Okay. <laughs> and beyond, just through the water, you see... Sorry. <laughs> Shot. Oh. Sorry. sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, that is completely fair. Completely fair. <laughs> you see a uh, young Komodo woman dressed up in similar clothing to uh, the lady you saw stood on the balustrade. Um, she's making coy eyes, and as you make eye contact with her, well, uh, she walks off. Oh. She walks off. Um, uh, she, you have interrupted whatever was going on between them uh, with your boisterous jack and napery. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and she, uh, she, she wanders off. Uh, and from um, 
Uh, from from the back behind you, from yeah. the courtyard, yeah. you hear this uh, this matronly like voice, <laughs> and you hear Josie, Josie, and um, she she disappears. She's gone. So Rom turns around to you, and he's super unhappy. I am really sorry. I was trying to have some fun. <laughs> we got told by a boy Zan that fun was the thing to be having. <laughs> so I tried to have it. I'm really Not sorry. Least, I'm really sorry about whatever was that. Do you want me to go after? I can go after. I can talk around a bit. Roll a <laughs> roll a persuasion check. <laughs> At disadvantage because you are drunk. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, that's a what's persuasion? Ooh. Um, actually, thirteen. Thirteen. He looks at you, and what was initially anger becomes a sort of cracked grin smile, and he says, "That sounds so like Zan." Ah, <laughs> uh, has he been feeding you the alcohol? Oh here? God, yes. Keep an eye on him. He doesn't drink it. There's a reason. We learned that the hard way. <laughs> um, roll a constitution saving throw. Yeah. That's actually 19. You are, I mean, you are drunk. Yeah, but I'm in control. But Sorry, you, you can, <laughs> no, you can, you can perceive that you are currently in control. Mm. But you have got drunk quicker than you have ever got drunk before. <laughs> And um, you perceive, even through your foggy haze, that if you were to keep drinking significantly more of this, you may not be in control. Right. How you wish to deal with that information <laughs> is entirely, entirely up to you. Fine. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to go and look for Zan. Uh, wonderful. Zan, uh, Zan actually came out into the, into the courtyard area where the pool was, uh, and you sort of dashed up past him, and he, he comes up from behind... Uh, at a sort of similar time, and he's like, "How's it going?" Um, and Rom looks across like the top of your head, and he's like, looks down, <laughs> looks up at his mate, and just sort of shakes his head <laughs> in that kind of like, "It was going great until this guy <laughs> rocked up and grabbed my junk." <laughs> um, so but you can't see him now, right? Uh, you guys are in the sort of pool courtyard, and he's gone into the atrium just yeah. beyond. Are you, you can see. Roll me a perception check. Uh, 11. You saw him go go into the other room. Uh, you saw uh, him grab at the person. Uh, you saw the reaction, but uh, and then you saw Zan go in after them. But you didn't you, like you didn't hear anything that went on. You weren't aware of anything beyond. I look, uh, I, I looked to find Noggin. Well, what I was wanting to be doing at this point is, you know, the, there's children about playing games. I want to say the fighting game's great, but you know what would be even more fun would be to go around and take shiny things from people. So I want to recruit a band. Fake games! <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Roll oh, persuasion. Oh, please let this work. Please let this work. This is really uh, 17. Um, yeah, you find a small group <laughs> Oh of my god, this is Four young children. Um, one of them looks to be around about the sort of age that you appear. Uh, the other three are slightly younger. Um, you would guess maybe seven or eight. They look cute and suggestible. And they are surprised by you, mostly because you speak common. Uh, and at this point in their lives, they mostly hear the Komodo language. Um, Common is a language that they associate more with, actually, with, with religious ceremonies for a bizarre reason. Um, <laughs> well covered. Uh, <laughs> note. Yeah. Um, and they they understand what you're saying. Um, they get the gist of it, and you see the eldest one sort of nods her head and looks to the other three and sort of you, you assume translates. Mm -hmm. And um, they disappear off, scuttling into the party. Um, Can I sort of... I, 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 I see what they're doing. 
Can I make it obvious that I have... Do I have this gunk? Who has this gunk? You've got this gunk. I've got this gunk. Can I sort of <laughs> hold it in such a way <laughs> that they will steal it from me? <laughs> 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 sort of really not paying attention to my pocket, having it dangling out and yep. pretending to be really drunk, and I'm wanting them to, to take it. Uh, y- yes. help and go, oh, look, there's a little... So what you are attempting to be is the opposite of stealthy. Yeah. <laughs> Can you roll an anti-stealth roll check? A stealth well, I've got check minus one charisma. Number, yeah. Yeah. Roll me a stealth check, and instead of adding it, my, subtract my, yeah. it, and I will set a DC that's low. That's zero. <laughs> wow. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You stand. In the most obvious place in this entire space, like <coughs> leaning. Oh, I hope no one steals my lovely skull. With this like shiny, glinty thing hanging off your thing, uh, hanging off the side, um, and uh, oh god, like see. My I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you to roll me a perception roll. Uh, Sixteen. Uh, you feel it disappear. <laughs> I, <smile>. <laughs> <laughs> I look over at Noggin, do a little wink, and I go to find Wim. Um, sweet. Uh, the what is, is in what, the foolish. what is, <laughs> <laughs> what is Noggin going to do in the next five minutes or so whilst her? Irregulars, Minions. for want of a uh, better phrase, uh, yes. whilst they are off casing the joint on behalf of her. <laughs> um, I'm going to like sneak, see if I can sneak upstairs and sneak around the house. See what I can find. Yeah. Whilst I've got them collecting my shiny things for me. Um, yeah, oh. there, are, there is a, uh, there's a set of stairs uh, in this area, um, just off from the, from the courtyard. Uh, and you you can get up them without any issue here. You see small uh, rooms, the odd. Uh, y- if you crack them open, you see that they're all empty uh, of, of people. Uh, there are bedsteads, and uh, I- this is obviously a a homestead, a dwelling where uh, uh, maybe um, an extended family live, and no one is around. You are not aware of anyone. Okay. I will look through for interesting things. I don't know what I'm lo- really looking for. Plans, I guess. Attack plans. <laughs> Is Blueprints. there a war room of some kind? You you find um, at the far end, back looking out over the front of the house where you first came in, you find a large room. And when you crack the door open to this, you find a, a study. Um, and in it is a, uh, a large wooden table, um, and on the table are various documents, and uh, you also see... Roll me a perception check, please. That is a 13. 13. On the wall beside you, you see a, uh, a crudely drawn map. Okay. Um, so, I have... Mm-hmm. So if there's like pen and paper about, then I'm just gonna copy that. Cool. Good work. Um, yeah, you take uh, a few minutes. Uh, you find a piece of paper and um, a drawing implement of some description, and you sketch out a rough copy of a map. Um, as you're doing it, and as you're looking at it in more detail, you see that it is a map of uh, to the to the left hand side of the map is the forest and the town and city in which you are in and on the far side of the map is um, a mountain sort of hill range is is shown and uh, the Katafu um, city is also shown and in between the two is this battlefield and you recognize the edge of the lake that you that your party came in at um, and also marked on the map um, about halfway but towards the top of the map, towards the northern side of the map, um, is marked a small copse uh, 
and it has the, the telltale tree symbols marked on it. Um, yeah, you you now have a copy of this map. Uh, otherwise, in the room there is, I mean, it's yeah, it's full of documents and plans, and uh, it's all written in a language that you you can't read. Um, Can I still copy out a few more, a few more things? They might come in useful. You get someone to roll me it. a performance check, please. Uh, Fifteen. Yeah, you make what you think are pretty good copies of documents in a language that you don't read, write, or really understand. Um, you think that they're pretty close to the originals, but you have no real way of guessing whether that's true or not. Um, at that point, you hear a soft on the door that you came in through, and you turn around and you see the older of the small number of children. And she comes up to you and she says, What are you doing in Uncle's study? You shouldn't be here. I thought there would be shiny things here. You sent us to get the shiny things. We're a team. <gasps> we all look for shiny things. Persuasion. <laughs> Thank you very much. She raises an eyebrow, looks confused, and says, hmm, Of course. We're just all on edge. We've lost so much recently. Papa says, We must stay strong. That, that Mahakirio will guide us, and we will know when the time to strike is right. I'm glad to have you here with us. We need all the help we can get. What has been happening? I'm not, as you can tell from my accent, I'm not really from around here. My family's just but on holiday. Decep <laughs> Deception. She looks at you and she's not convinced. Um, she says, it's strange to come here on holiday when, when things are so bad. I mean, surely even back in the city they must know. Well, my parents came to help, but I'm on holiday. I'm just having a jolly. Roll deception at an advantage. Yeah. Eighteen. Uh, she she looks you in the eye and um, she is convinced by by your story, uh, and she says, "Of course, we are too young to fight." Thank. So we can Thank Mahakir <laughs> Thank Mahakirio that you brought your parents with us. The fight will be hard and long, but when the great dragon is willing then then despite all these odds we will we will be victorious. Finally, surely the tablet may be ours. And at that point she looks like wide eyed and she Slams her mouth over her, her hand over her mouth, and she's like, and she scuttles off out of the room, and she realizes that she may have said something that she should not have done. Uh, <laughs> I think it's time that I put our drunken plan. I think we should. <laughs> I think we should. Okay, from across the party, I point at that lizard, <laughs> and I go, that. <laughs> What is he doing here? <laughs> you told me you loved me. <laughs> I re I'm kind of real. I'm improvising now because that wasn't the plan. <laughs> and I go, well, you threw that love in my face. <laughs> Seven pairs of. 
Komodo, who were at that point previously engaged in heavy conversation and dialogue, turn and you feel 28 pairs of eyes on you. (laughs) Record scratch. (laughs) (laughs) He should not be here either. I said I would never see him again. I start chucking like. Yeah. Pops yes, around. yes, and I do the same thing. This is the this worst is too much. I've ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna run at him and try and kiss him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you do you put it off? No, I roll with it. I'm, I, I you, <laughs> <laughs> so you see him clatter towards you, pushing people and trays of drinks out of the way. I can't like, be without <laughs> you. <laughs> at this point. In a distant room, you hear. <laughs> <laughs> right. And there is a sudden change in the sweet, sticky, <laughs> sickly smell that had previously fallen over the room. Um, in the corner, uh, furthest away from where you are, you see this kind of strange, yellowy, browny, greeny puff and um, suddenly everyone starts hacking and coughing (laughs) from that corner Um, at that moment both of you feel on the back of your shoulders a hand and you turn and look Rom is behind you Zam is behind you he turns and looks you in the face and he says I think that's our cue to go (laughs) (laughs) and they grab you both and they pull you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not resisting. Do you, you don't contest? Do you contest? No. no. They grab you and they pull you out of the room that you are in. They grab you. They take you through the um, the main courtyard area. Yep. Um, as people move out of the way and everyone turns to stare at you and you feel... Uh, 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 oh, You're God, all terrible. Be, You're yeah, terrible Yeah, people. like another, Why? another 10, Why did you bring him 12, 12 of the Komodo turn to look at you and they stare, mouths agape. As they drag, drag you through and through, they go into the atrium. I'm going to come to you in a se- one second. As, as they come through the atrium and head out the front door, a small group of them are started to sort of pitch after you. Not in yeah. battle, but just in confusion. And like, uh, like yeah. there's a few smiles as ah. if to be like, oh, it's always like this at the Feast of the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's always one. Oh, yeah. um, as you go through the atrium area, Zan puts out his finger in front of him, and as you go out the door, you see a small bolt of arcane mm. energy fly mm. from his finger, and the magic that was holding the yes. cube of water yes. dispels, <laughs> and the, the room becomes flooded with this low few inches of water, and there's this... Yeah, as the, as as the fish. fish struggle, awesome. um, and you are dragged and pulled back out of the room uh, and out into the darkness. And it takes you a moment for your eyes to adjust to the, to the darkness and the gloom um, and the torchlight that is outside the house. What are you going to do when you hear this commotion? I'm going to go and collect my shiny things from my little group of thieves as soon as possible. <laughs> um, I say you, you make it out of the room and uh, the, small, the small one who came to talk to you has scuttled off. At the top of the stairs, you see one of the children... Um, the other two are the ones that found the skunk. Okay. So they are of otherwise engaged. This one stands there and holds out in front of her um, a pair of engra- uh, not engraved, like embroidered silver slippers <gasps> with um, in gold embroidery um, uh, CC, um, and they look like they're sort of about the same size as a small woman's shoe. Um, and she holds them out in front of you in this kind of like wide-eyed thankfulness. Uh, are these okay? They are beautiful. How are you going to get out of the house? Down the head. Um, <laughs> the room that you I'm were in dash, dash, is dash, right dash. at the is, is right at the front of the house, and below you, you are aware, you perceive that th- this small party have been dragged out through the front door. They are about 15, 20 foot below you, beneath the window. So they've um, ah climbed down. You climb down. Uh, Roll me an acrobatics or athletics check. I have got a climbing thing. But that's not <laughs> Critical failure. Oh, um, oh. You've got oh. so much stuff on you. You're so <laughs> laden down with 
teeth. Um, that you're, and also the front of the house is covered in so many plants and um, things that you sort of you slip, you catch, you catch your ankle a little bit, you end up dangling upside down. You um, you uh, you shake yourself a bit. Your ankle comes free. You drop. You land on your shoulders, taking two bludgeoning damage. But you are on the ground um, and you are prone. At that point, Rom grabs you and just picks you up with his katafu strength. And you, uh, as, a, as a small party, yeah. you run <laughs> off into the darkened forest. As you are running through the forest, you hear a pitched scream. And that's where we're going to leave this out. Yeah! Awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> that was really good fun. Uh, thank you, everyone. We are out Uh, I am in Beale de Malfa, which is at uh, two fifty in the afternoon at Cowgate in the um, Iron Belly in the Underbelly, uh, and it's a show about a clown who breaks the universe. Uh, I'm in two shows, one called Mars Actually, and one called The Jurassic Parks. They're alternating nights, seven p.m. Assembly Roxy, and we are Super Bolt Theatre. Awesome! Thank you so much, Sarah. Thanks for watching, um, and that's it for tonight. Guys, book stream. Thank you very much. Bye stream. Woo! Thanks, man. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs>